This is the final video on how I built an electric skateboard for about $200. So let's see how I did it and how you too can. In the first video, we estimated how much the parts will cost us and ordered them. In the next two videos, we built the battery pack and the battery management system or BMS. The links for all those videos are in the description and you must check them out if you want to learn how to build your own electric skateboard. The longboard that we ordered from China got lost in transit and I uh, never received it. But that's okay, I bought a used penny board instead which was smaller but it saved me some money because it was cheaper. However, there is a catch. Later in this video, we will see why it is a bad idea to build an electric skateboard from a penny board. First thing to do was to hook up the motor on the board with the help of the motor mount and a set of gears that we ordered together with the motor. The gears, the belt and the mount together came in one package and they seem to be of very good build quality. There were also a lot of bolts and nuts and allen keys uh, that you need to put the whole thing together and uh, it was all there so I was pretty impressed with that. The first issue that I ran into with the penny board is that the wheels are too small so a little bit of rubber had to be cut off from the inside to fit the big gear. The second problem was that since the bolts had to go through the tire, I had to drill the holes straight and align them perfectly with the gear, which was another difficult task. So to avoid this next time, I'm just going to order something like this and make sure the size and the holes match up with the gear. Back to our problem. I built this little aluminum plate to support the bolts on the outer side of the wheel like this. And that also helped me to align the holes properly. After somehow drilling almost straight holes, I was able to pass the bolts through it and they tightened up really nice and tight. Now it was time to mount the wheel, but there was one other big problem. Since this is a penny board, the shaft of the truck is smaller than a long board. There wasn't enough space to fit the motor mount and the wheel together. Shh. If only there was a way to push the mount back a little bit. The problem is that this support plate is in the way. Now you can go ahead and cut this support plate off, but that will just make the whole structure weak. And uh, you know, if you're a skinny kid, that's okay, but I'm neither skinny nor a kid anymore. So the other option that I had was uh, to cut off the mount itself and then actually just weld it on top of uh, the truck. So after cutting the mount, I did a trial assembly and it seemed okay. Now the trick is to ensure that it is welded dead straight to the shaft so any misalignment could mean your motor and wheel will not be tightly fit together with the belt. Now to mount this I required welding apparatus which was generously provided by a friend. Uh, just a couple of spot welds did the job, nothing too complicated. And after some fireworks I let it cool down and in the end it actually looked pretty good. And uh, after tightening the motor and putting the belt on, wow, it fit perfectly. At this point, the hard part was over. Let's go over to the fun part, the electrical part. Now, before we start, let's understand what's happening here with a simple schematic. We have three main components in this build. The motor, the ESC, or the electronic speed controller, and the batteries. That's it. Uh, we already talked about the motor and the battery pack in the previous video. So let's look at the ESC. Your ESC is the controller of your motor. Uh, it's shipped in this box from China with the remote all together for a slick deal of $40. We don't have time in this video to go into the details, so let's just see how to connect it to your setup. We have the motor with the three bullet connectors and one set of small Hall effect sensor connectors, so they go straight to the ESC. Uh, there's another connector uh, 
which is yellow in color, this is the XT60 type connector. Uh, this will go to your battery pack and uh, that's about it. Now our next step is to solder some XT60 connectors to our battery pack so we can hook it up back to the ESC. So all we need to do now is connect the XT60 female connector to the P plus and P negative terminals. But don't forget, we also have to charge the battery somehow. Hmm. For charging, we need to connect another set of wires to the same P plus and P negative terminals, which will go to our charger. So we need to solder a socket. And for the job, I got some wires and ordered a lithium ion charger of the right specifications for my battery pack. It has a regular laptop style battery charger end. So what we need is the female connector of the same type on our battery. Okay, enough talk, let's get soldering. First, we need two sets of wires on P plus and P minus terminals on the BMS. One set is going to the ESC and the other set is going to the charger as we just saw. Make sure to use thick wires, something like AWG 12 or 14 for this and use a good amount of solder so all the juicy current can flow from the batteries to the ESC. After soldering your BMS should look like this and at this point it is a good idea to insulate the ends of the wires with shrink wrap so that they don't short together. You have to be careful around these battery packs because they carry a lot of energy and any mishap can result in a fire or an explosion. And once the heat shrinks were in, I soldered the connector for the charger on the other side. And see how I have shrink wrapped all the exposed ends carefully. You do not want to have these connectors touching each other. And after I was done, a quick test charge was done to bring the batteries up to full charge. And at this point, I monitored each battery and the battery management system very carefully until it was fully charged just to make sure that the battery management system is working and it doesn't overcharge the batteries. Once I was confident, it was time to move on and solder the XT60 connector in the same manner. After it was done, we could connect the batteries to the ESC. A quick test showed that everything was working and I was excited. But we still have to mount everything and secure it to the board. Now I've seen people using uh, zip ties, velcro and all sorts of tape and stuff. But trust me, all that doesn't work. You will surely fall, break and damage your build and your batteries and it can be dangerous. So the best way is to drill holes and secure everything properly. I marked the holes on the PCB board of the ESC itself and drilled those on um, the skateboard. To mount it, I used the same box that the ESC was shipped in and mounted the on-off button on the side. There was two more cutouts made on the box. One was for the XT60 connector to connect to the batteries and the other one for the motor wires on the back. And I found a similar box for the battery pack and mounted it in the same way. After carefully wrapping the battery in electrical tape, I used some strong duct tape to ensure the battery pack and the wires will not move or vibrate and cause any shorts or loosen uh, the connections. And after it was perfectly secured in the box and connected to the ESC, one cutout was also made for the charging connector. And I further zip tied the box to ensure the lid doesn't fall off with vibrations. At this point, finally, I was done. But it was late and I was tired. Tomorrow, we ride. It was a glorious day and all I had to do was just turn the switch on and we were ready to ride.
Now, I'm not a skater, so it did take me a few trials. But after some time, I was cruising. I am so pleasantly surprised by the motor and the ESE. Uh, the controls are crisp and responsive and I did not expect it to be this fast. I mean, it's not fast, fast, but it is brisk enough. Now, I know you have a lot of questions about the range and the top speed, but honestly, I have not tested it yet. But I will be taking it through, through some very, very tough trials soon. In the meantime, just enjoy the footage. Keep fungineering, stay safe and I will see you next time.